Hello class, I just wanted to go over with you uh, the Impressionistic Painting Project and the next steps. Uh, so first let's go just review the style. Uh, so we're painting a style that's inspired by the artists and the Impressionism movements. Uh, so that includes, that includes both European and American Impressionists as well as contemporary Impressionistic painters. Uh, so the work to the left is a work by uh, Monet who was a European Impressionist. Um, the work in the middle um, is done by William Chase who is an American Impressionist. And the work on the right uh, was done by Francis Sills, um, who is an Impressionistic painter um, who works today in uh, South Carolina. And you can see a common thread between them uh, with regards to the subject matter as well as the application of paint. So there's two aspects that we're going to focus on in our Impressionistic painting. Uh, the first is using Impressionistic marks, which we'll define as unblended broken marks with a buttery pink consistency. As, as you can see in the background, um, these marks are distinct and you can see them, they're unblended. And you can see right here is how thick the paint is applied. Okay, it's applied nice and opaque. Okay, and when you're using acrylic, you're not going to be adding a lot of water to it. Second, um, in this style, we're going to be using optical color mixing. And this is where marks of different colors are placed next to each other to create a new perceived color. So for example, in the shadow, um, it's a, let's see, a subdued blue-green, and that's created by combining green marks next to blue marks, next to pink marks, next to purple marks, okay? And then when you, when you look back, it creates this subdued uh, blue-green. Okay, so in the initial layer, our goal was to establish the general colors of our forms, okay? Keeping it simple and working across the whole canvas. And that's what we started in our last class. Okay, and once you have that complete, then what you're going to do is you're going to capture the nuances and subtleties within each form. So if we're looking at this tree, um, you can see that it's not brown across the entire tree. In fact, there's, there's some greens near the bottom, and this is where the light's hitting the pond and reflecting back onto the bottom of the tree. Um, there's some peachy, peachy browns right here, okay, and some more uh, grayish browns right here. Okay. And what that does is it creates a, a more uh, subtle and nuanced um, understanding of color. And if you look at this uh, sky right here, you can see it's purple near the horizon. It gets a little bit of a reddish orange near the left hand side and a yellowish orange near the right hand side. So also, um, once you've finished the initial layer, you're going to develop a greater uh, density of marks. And you can see that in this Monet. Do you see how there's a... Uh, you know, there's multiple sets of marks on top of each other, um, which creates a great mark density. Okay, what this shows is a very careful study of uh, these, these uh, natural objects. And that's what you're going to want.